Hello and welcome back to Garage Tool Talk, where we provide expert review of hand tools and power tools. Last week I posted a video about the CMC D700 cordless power tool from Craftsman. Um, I walked through some of the, the features I liked about it, some things I didn't like, gave you a little bit of performance testing. But uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to open up the tool, I'm going to show you the insides, walk through some of the features uh, that I like about the, the internal construction of the tool, and uh, hopefully you gain a little bit more insight about uh, what this tool is all about. So pull up a seat, make yourself comfortable, and uh, let's get this taken apart. Okay, we're back. We got the, uh, the tool taken apart. And um, first thing I wanted to mention is um, I noticed there's three different types of screws holding the housing together. You got the, uh, the screws that hold the housing halves together, the screws that go into the front here that hold the... Uh, this uh, outer gearbox onto the motor assembly, and then there were screws that hold the uh, the internal gearbox uh, to this gearbox. So three different types of screws. Um, something I don't typically like to see um, during the manufacturing process that up opens up opportunities for who's ever assembling the tool to put um, the wrong screw in place. Um, of course, that can be mitigated through manufacturing processes and pokey oaks and. Uh, things like that on the production line, but uh, typically in general, I like to see a consistent screw size throughout the entire assembly just to minimize that risk and uh, make sure one of the tools don't uh, uh, accidentally get out to the consumer with uh, with a wrong screw in, in place, which would you know might affect the longevity of the tool. Um, but anyways, we got um, so the way this is constructed is we got a clamshell housing. Um, which is basically similar to a clamshell. You got one piece that goes on top of another. You got the gearbox and quick change mechanism on the front that locks in with a locating and locking feature here that locks into the clamshell housing on the back. Um, overall construction, you know, quick change mechanism. You got your torque, uh, torque gearbox here. You got another gearbox here uh, for the speed selector. You got a canned motor. That's your, uh, your DC motor. You got your variable speed uh, switch uh, with electronics. And uh, you got your terminal block for the, uh, for the battery pack. So a couple things I noticed immediately um, that I liked about the tool here. Um, you know, the, the way the plastic housing is constructed. Um, I'm looking at the, at the screw bosses. They're very well supported. There's rib features that you can see on nearly, well, every single boss or it's supported by one of the outside walls. Like this one's supported by an outside wall. This one's supported by a wall, a wall, rib features, wall, rib features, wall. So all around, very well supported uh, screw bosses, um, which makes, uh, that, that, that uh, affects the strength of the tool. Um, during drop testing, when they're uh, getting the tool um, certified, whether it's UL or CE or whoever, um, you know, we can't have cracks in the housing. Um, or anything that affects uh, the longevity of the tool that way. So I, I, I like seeing um, I like seeing supported screw bosses. Um, another feature I see right away is there's this nice tongue and groove feature along the outside of the housing. There's uh, one on that housing half. Mating features here, tongue and groove, that uh, allows for a really nice uh, fitting housing when the two halves go together. That kind of locks everything in, keeps it all nice and snug. Um, you don't see, uh, you know, it prevents um, uh, any cosmetic issues when you look in from the outside of the tool. You know, it's like a nice uh, barrier. So very nice to see something like that. Um, the, the soft grip on the outside of the tool, I like how it's locked in place. There's uh, little tongue and groove features that are molded into the plastic that lock the soft grip into place. As most of you know, if, if, if you're working with a uh, power tool for a long time, over time, the soft grip, on some tools eventually uh, kind of gets really soft and uh, spongy and peels away from the base material. Um, what these locking features do is they, they lock it into the base plastic. So that's really good to see something like that. I like that. Um, something else I see here is there's nice wire traps to hold the wiring in place. That's very nice. Uh, prevents loose wires from uh, you know rattling around under vibration which uh, could affect the longevity of the tool. Um, although there are no wire traps on, on these wires, uh, they're relatively short distance, um, so I don't see that as a huge deal, but 
Um, nice to see it around the tool for the most part. Um, something else to mention, um, I can see from the inside of the housing, uh, what's stamped on the inside is GFPP, which stands for glass-filled polypropylene. That's good material for, for housing materials. It uh, high, has high impact strength, um, has high continuous operating temperatures, and uh, reduced deformation under long-term stress. So as an as a option for the designer when he created this, uh, that's a great material option. Uh, now onto the motor. This is a uh, drawn steel can style motor, as we call it. Um, it has a flux ring on the outside, permanent magnets on the inside. There's a uh, centrifugal style uh, radial fan internal to the, uh, to the motor. This is a brushed motor. I see the commutator and brushes down here buried inside. Um, nice accurate housing typically on the can motors, so you can hold it nice and accurately within the housing. Um, so uh, I see little rib features on the outside of the plastic housing that uh, locates the steel housing of the motor nicely, keeps everything nice and snug. Um, as far as cooling, um, I, I mentioned there's a centrifugal fan. These are the exhaust outlets here on the side. Intake comes in from the back of the, from the back side of the tool. There's four little holes back here, and then there's uh, corresponding four holes kind of between these two pieces. You can't quite see it, but there are holes in there, and the air flows in from from the front and the back and exhausts out the side. So that's pretty normal. I like that they have rib features around the exhaust outlets to direct the exhaust out of the tool instead of into the tool. So that's nice and efficient. Um, Pretty standard terminal blocks, just push on terminal blocks here in the back under the motor. Um, something to mention, um, which is an important one, this has a, a what looks like a bronze bushing in the back instead of a ball bearing. Um, I didn't assume the, I didn't uh, disassemble the front of it here, but I assume that's uh, that's the same thing on the front as a bronze bushing, um, which which isn't great, um, but given the cost of the tool, um, you know the bushing it. It'll work out fine. There's really no radial load on this uh, because of the gearbox and the way everything's set up. So it's really just rotational. Um, shouldn't be a huge issue, but uh, you know, given the price point, um, you know, not bad. We got the gearbox on the front, which uh, the speed selector uh, moves a, a set of gears here on the inside. What I like is there's nice, uh, nice steel. It looks like permanent uh, uh, or molded uh, gear, uh, molded gears here on the front. Um, or excuse me, powdered metal gears, I should have said, with some grease around the inside. So pretty nice construction. Um, you got a uh, planetary gear system here. Uh, this came out here. You got a planetary gear system here on the front. Uh, metal gears also. Uh, something to note when I was uh, lightly taking this apart. I didn't want to get it too far apart, but there is a, uh, a set of bearings here on the bottom that uh, Right inside the plastic housing, you can see, see so got the metal ball bearings riding inside this plastic housing. I don't really love that. I think over time um, that'll you know likely wear out between the bearing and the uh, in the plastic housing. But once again, given the price point and this being a, a DIY style tool, I don't think it's a huge deal. Um, once again, metal gears here, nice metal plate. So overall, the internals of the gearbox are, are pretty nice. I'm impressed with that. Um, the housing, the outside housing material, um, if it was a professional tool um, you know, that a tradesman's going to be using every day, um, I would have liked to have seen something on a metal here, along with something, you know, something on a metal here. I also like to see a metal nose on this, just because you know, if, you're, if you're drilling into something and you, you, know, you nick the workpiece or nick whatever you're, you're drilling into, you know, this gets torn up pretty quickly with the plastic. But you know, overall, you know, not bad for the price point. Um, electronics, so we got a sealed um, variable speed switch here. Um, nice rib features locating everything. It's nice and snug in here. So there's really no movement once it's all locked in. Um, yeah, you got the LED work light running off the, the front of the or the top of the switch going forward. You got the uh, reverse forward and reverse uh, plastic piece here, which actuates a little, uh, just like a little uh, rotating um, actuator on top of the switch. It looks like it's all sealed, which is good against uh, you know protect against dust intrusion and uh, dust quickly wears any moving parts out. So 
So it's nice that this looks like it's all sealed. Uh, some potting compound here, you know, I assume that was probably added uh, to mitigate vibration. It might have had an issue during testing. Um, like I said, wire traps around pretty much everything. Um, what I like here about this battery terminal block is these, what looks like brass plates, are over molded into the plastic. So they aren't secured with screws or anything that way. They're actually molded into the plastic during the plastic injection molding process of that part, which is nice because they're not going to come loose. They are one with the plastic now. So that's nice. Um, also, something else to mention is every one of these uh, connection points on the wires, everything is soldered in place, which is nice. Um, you, know, you don't have to worry about connections coming loose. Um, you know, a nice solid uh, connection between all the electronics. Um, of course, the, uh, the one that isn't is uh, the motor connection. And my experience from testing, you don't typically see uh, these connections coming loose. So I think that's fine. And given the, uh, uh, the way this is probably designed for manufacturing and assembly, um, you know, this, is, this, uh, this comes in as an assembly between the, the switch and the terminal block. They drop that into the house, and then they drop the motor in and attach the, the connections. So it all makes sense from a uh, design and uh, or uh, design for manufacturing and assembly standpoint. But uh, overall, um, you know, I like the construction. I think it's high quality construction. Um, the housing is uh, very well designed uh, with the screw, screw bosses, the uh, the tongue and groove features. The, uh, the soft grip, the way it's uh, locked into the housing, very nice. Um, I like how snug everything fits together. Um, it tells me that when they were dialing in the tooling, um, you know, they got, it, they got it pretty, pretty accurate. Everything is nicely fitting, nicely, nice and snug, not too tight, not loose. So that's going to affect the longevity of the tool. Um, you know, if things are loose and rattling around inside, you know, it, you know, typically vibration, uh, you know, uh, has a lot of wear and tear on components. Um, I like the simple battery pack is, or battery pack attachments, as I said. No, no additional uh, fuss there. Just uh, nice over molded uh, terminals. Not much to go wrong there. And uh, like I said, I like the metal gears in the in the gearbox. Very nice. Um, my dislikes. I wish it had a ball bearing on it. Um, just for longevity, I wish it was brushless instead of the, uh, you know, the brushed motor. And, um, you know, I kind of wish the front of the housing and the gearbox, uh, I wish these were metal. But, you know, overall, given the price point, you know, I, as I said in my first video, this is a, I purchased this as, as part of a value pack with two tools for $99. So, you know, given that, um, you know, as a DIY style tool, it's, it's really excellent. You know, great value for the money. And I uh, recommend everyone checking it out. Thank you and take care.